So, now that we have our scheduler, let's see. Well, first of all, we forgot to do one thing and we didn't actually test with uh, the scheduler what happens if you go with more than uh, yeah with more than one so I've added these two lines but here's the thing if we go on the game manager and say we start with three schedules per frame immediately we're going to get an error okay that happens because once you, we start removing the paths and once we start removing the well the schedules uh, the jobs that are done at some point it means that once you're here and you will still have frames to, to go to it will look for another job but our pathfinder job is basically not at zero so we should also include A check that if there's no pathfinder job then just break the while loop it doesn't need to be doing anything else okay so the reason why i would like to do to also have these two times is because there is actually no need to have the while loop running if there is no jobs to be done okay so with this it will work just fine now the other thing that i would like to do for this one at least Let's delete the other units. I think I made my point, so let's keep the two basic ones. So the other thing that is only left onto our Pathfinder, and we will have, for the most part, almost everything that we need, is the, yeah, it will basically just be to block and say that some paths are not walkable. Okay, so I'm going to add a cube inside some of that those nodes. Okay, maybe something like that. And so we're basically going to be disabling a few nodes. Which also comes to our question that we should change our pathfinder as to what happens if you do not actually get any results. Okay, so what will happen if you return an empty target node? Okay, so right now we do have the obstacles and they do have a box collider. So now things will start to get a little bit more interesting. Let's open up our grid manager in this case. And in our node, we should have a flag that will say public bool is walkable. I'm going to start with true because we're simply going to assume that everything is walkable. Now, to test this, we're actually going to write some code just to test for this. The Whenever you're doing any changes in the sims on to a node, so basically whenever you, play, you place uh, you place a couch, you place your TV, whatever you're good doing, it's actually a different mode, which means uh, since you can know exactly when and where something is placed, this means that you can basically know exactly also which node you should be actually affecting and all of that, all of those things. Okay, uh, which means in uh, the later version, when we have the build mode in, in the game then that the next part of the code that we're going to write we simply won't have a need for it okay so let's go and do uh, doesn't need to be public let's do avoid read node whenever we are calling then a new node whenever we're going to be building this we're going to also call the read node and let's also pass the node inside. Okay. So, 
First of all, we're going to need a few variables that we're going to be using and we will need a read extends okay and that will have some value and also we will need a read offset just in case we will actually require to offset the base position okay so the idea is we're simply going to be looking for an object with an overlap let me check one thing So, we're going to be looking for colliders okay. by using physics.overlap box. Okay, the, we need to pass the origin, and that origin will be the wall position pa plus the read, the read offset we have above. Then the half extends will be the read extends subdivide by two we don't really need any rotation and we can pass a layer but I think we can just use all of them for now now we're going to treat it that if we have any colliders in here so basically you could just do if colliders dot length is greater than zero then the node is simply not walkable okay and that's pretty much it, to be honest. Mm. Okay, now we we will need a way to actually visualize this so that we can know what is actually happening. And to do that, we're going to use uh, the Andro Gizmos method. Okay, and let's assign a color onto our gizmos let's say it's red then we would like to have yeah we're basically going to have to to assign whenever this the read is happening we will have to assign the position that this actually happens and that will be inside a vector three or visualize position okay and then basically for each vector 3 v in these positions gizmos draw y cube v plus the read uh, no i think we don't really need to have the read offset just v read extends but in here we can now store the position like this and then we can simply add this position into our this position okay this only happens once once we first create the node again we will not require this method when we have the build mode in because we will have access that we will have direct access onto the nodes themselves which means you can just paint them walkable or not okay when you place uh, an object down the walls are completely taken out of the equation because we have to calculate the directions we could if we want to also create a method that will filter out some um, some walls but as you already saw, it's pretty fast already, so not really a need for that. And before we actually hit play, we actually have to set up the amounts. I'm going to the extents. I'm going to raise this at 0.5, and for the extents, we could probably do just 25 by 25. I'm going to hit play, and we will see them visualizing in here. So basically, that's the sample we are getting it's only a tiny sample it's only a tiny sample that we get and we know if a node is walkable or not but it it does the job pretty well 
Okay, because we now know that this node is simply not walkable alongside with this node and most likely you could just raise this to here. Okay, but to better see it, let's see. We could just say that if it's not walkable, don't add don't add it inside the phase inside the, the visible positions so this will be clean as you can see now i think we get yeah, i think this just gets all of this uh, or well nobody called for that okay so you can see now that all the wo the viable walkable positions can walk uh, where they can walk and what they can do and so far. So with now with that we also have obstacle avoidance and so far and stuff like that. Here's the thing though, what we don't actually have is avoidance on uh, on unit level. So one of units doesn't actually avoid the other unit when once they move. Okay. So we will also need some dynamic obstacle avoidance and not just uh, static obstacle avoidance. Okay. One thing we should test, however, is what if you can reach a position? And I'm going to guess that they are all trying to access a different position and because it's not actually running or it's not actually well okay i'm going to enable only one and i'm actually going to see what happens on the callback level that means inside our pathfinder uh, or inside a good object in this case we're going to do a debug.log p.count And let's hit play. So we should be getting zero. We should at least get one zero over there. Or maybe the callback never actually runs. Okay, he took one, took the other one. But I think we are stuck over there because you never, yeah, okay. Here's the thing if we are here, so if p.count is zero. then simply try again. So we should be keep getting zeros and zeros and zeros. And that's easy to, to fix though. And that's easy to manage. So I don't, I'm not really going to be bothered a lot by that. Okay, and you can see that he's now controlled. Oh, well, he's now confined inside to where he can actually walk to. So we should have a problem with it anymore. As you saw though, for whatever reason, we got some random positions just jumping from anywhere. Like this, which is actually strange that it's happening. And one final thing that we could have, I guess, yeah, I guess it doesn't matter. We should probably filter out that if you're trying to walk on a walkable position, but then again, you really can just walk to a position that you cannot target a position that you cannot walk to. So I guess that's a little bit uh, less of a worry either way. So yeah, I think for, I think, yeah, that's enough for this part, to be honest. Like we do have uh, obstacle avoidance and we can do dynamic obstacle avoidance on the next part. So I'm going to finish this part here. As always, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and if you like to see more stuff, more videos, more series, more of everything, then consider supporting me on Patreon, as you probably already do since this is a Patreon exclusive series. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I'll see you on the next one.